A lot of people have been wondering how the plasma moon might work. The idea of the moon being a reflection of our greater realm. Here's a little sample. I'd like to immediately start off by saying, I don't know anything. This channel is based on questioning things, all things. I think and hope it's the last freedom of speech that we have to ask a question. When you can't just say something, or if the answer isn't clear, best to just ask a question. Thank you for being here. Today we're going to explore some interesting topics. Welcome. I feel like the world loves and hates the artists. Like, in the end, we appreciate the fruit of the artist, but maybe we also think the artist is a selfish, self-absorbed prick. And that might be me, but really I'm just a hermit. If there was a coffee shop, I would go, and I would chat with people. Probably about this research, this would be a nice coffee shop. Some seating under here. Have a cappuccino and a smoke. Imagine how nice it might have been here in its prime, bustling. But in these old photos, in the earliest photos, we don't see anyone. Really a pathetic scene. No restaurants, bunch of shit in the street. But today, I want to have a little look at the Erie Canal. Today's video will get heavier as it moves forward, but I thought we would start lightly. I love a canal. I grew up with the canal as my backyard. The canal is like a river, but man-made. My canal clearly was. It had concrete banks, but that was in Arizona. Here we are in upstate New York. The Erie Canal runs east and west between the Hudson River and Lake Erie. Completed in 1825. That's it. It was first proposed in 1780. Let me just flash the men in tights up here real quick, just to give you an idea of the greatest fashion in 1780. Tights, wigs, wooden teeth. But nevertheless, conducting a formal survey didn't happen until 1808. Okay, so the survey begins in 1808. It's completed in 1825. They authorized construction in 1817. They completed it in 1825. Seven or eight years, they completed this canal in the early 1800s. The early and ambitious tights wearing 1800. I'm not sure exactly at what point the tights disappeared and the wigs. We see a lot of lithographs with tights and wigs, but when we look at the earliest photographs of early cities throughout the realm, everybody's wearing suits, rich or poor. Just this abundance of suits. Let me know if you've ever seen someone walking around in the wig and tight apparel. A photograph. But anyway, building this canal in 1825 and how about this canal? Here it is. 350 miles. 350 miles. And the numbers just don't add up. I've mentioned before they've been working on my road for two years. Just a little one mile section. Here we have 350 miles. Not of road. Yes, it would be like building a road. But now you have to go down and level and encase the canal. Some sort of lining. We'll be told this was stone. But what we see is an old world concrete. Concrete. And you see buildings right up to the canal. Here, this canal is passing over a bridge. And this video is not about the Erie Canal. I'm just opening up with this. Because when we see these cities in ruins, look at this, there's no windows. Some of them. This one's been busted down here in the corner. But even before getting into these buildings, I simply wanted to discuss the canal itself. Before, according to our historical narrative, they built a building, they built a canal. And by the time we come around, it's all in ruins. But here's the canal. Look at these rounded stones down here. Rounded blockage. 350 miles through forests, through mountains. We're told before dynamite was even invented, and this is the beginning, and should be one of the first red flags. And as far as I'm concerned, nothing that they say matters. Everything else will just be a distraction. Here we see Governor DeWitt Clinton, champion of the canal. 
There we go. Maybe related to Bill. I did not have relations with that canal. I know. And here we can see in 1840 how well charted the surrounding topography, mountain ranges, and this perfect canal. And here we can see the varying terrain and elevation that they would have been challenged with. They would have built many aqueducts, as the one we see here over the Mohawk River. And then we see little shacks, little wooden shacks here. And before the train, the canal would serve these people. This would be a very popular destination along such a perfect canal. Place to set up shop. And here we see some polygonal block work, just ruins of the Erie Canal. That was in Durhamville, pretty much right in the center. Here an original lock system, crossing the Niagara. So it's just so much more than coming in here in the early 1800s and digging a canal. The years of planning and engineering that would be required to pull this off would probably take the eight years we're told they build the whole thing and today we try to build on land as much as possible in the old world it was no problem building in the water with a superior concrete of course we would be told this is blocked but now let's get on to the good part of the video So I never really thought that this research would become so interesting to as many people as it has. And I never could have imagined what the story would have revealed. For me, it kind of started with buildings like this one. If you knew nothing, if you lived in a gutter, if you were born in the gutter, you would eventually come to know this building through a coin. It might be a bill of currency. And yet for me, this was the beginning. I didn't have anybody to talk to about this subject with. There was nobody really to ask the question, especially when I was young. And my parents, being foreign, gave me the opportunity to go to Europe several times in my youth. We had family. It was like any family gathering. You kind of half like it. But my favorite was the architecture. All the European wonders. And even then, in my young age, I felt like most people didn't care. Just like these two people don't care. They're just shuffling by. They might appreciate it, but they might not. They might not give a damn. Excuse me, what do you think about this building? I don't give a damn about this building. I'm late for work. Oh, thank you. How about you? What are your thoughts on this building? I think it's kind of ugly. They should tear it down. Oh, I appreciate it. And many were torn down. Thousands all throughout the realm looking just like this or having this style a big dome ornamental from top to bottom no detail spared and yet this is the oldest not just in america but in all parts of the realm when we look at images from the 1800s when things we are told are at their infancy we see capital buildings and town halls city halls brick and stone oftentimes complex looking technologies and power lines coupled with a people that seem to have nothing to do with the old infrastructure that they're surrounded by and the infrastructure is in ruins oftentimes at the very beginning it's in ruins and that brings us to the beginning in the beginning in this field of research is not like 10,000 years ago or even 5,000 years ago. That's all very interesting, but how can we be certain about anything that far back if we can't be certain about the last 150 years? Why throughout this realm do we see a people completely backwards seeming in these fully built out towns in ruins? Now back to questions, I've just asked questions for over five years now. We don't have answers. So all we could do was break down every bit of this history piece by piece. Reading the narrative one building at a time. And not just my channel, but hundreds of channels now. When I started my channel, there were maybe a dozen channels, maybe two dozen, sharing this information very timidly, asking questions. And before us, they were asking the questions in Russia. It started at a museum, from my understanding, and they had excavated the building 
Of course, it didn't start out as a museum. The Polytechnic Museum or College? But this is what was revealed. And without giving it a title, although it has a title, generically, in this community, it would come to pass that this was not unique to this building in this part of the realm. This would become something that could be found in every city and town throughout the realm. And again, coupling this with cities just starting out, horse and wagon, it begs to ask questions. And upon asking the questions, there are the worst answers given to us by academia. When looking into these buildings, one by one, as we have been for years, we often find they have a construction date of one year. And yet for the entirety of our known history, to my knowledge, these questions had not been posed. They had not been challenged. How are you building these buildings in a year? Sometimes the city is built in a year, and every building is built in an equally short amount of time, as we see in San Francisco. But going back to this phenomenon, we add another layer to this story, and one that is not answered by anyone. The majority of buildings are buried, and not properly buried. I mean, if you were going to make a basement, you would have, of course, concrete in modern times. In old times, you would have a durable stone, but buried windows and brick and doors make absolutely no sense. So someone, maybe it started with a few dozen people, start asking the questions. And the more people that see it also agree, this doesn't make any sense. And then we dig a little further and look at enough pictures and read enough historical narratives and we begin to see that somebody knew this. Somebody made an effort to clean things up and someone makes an effort to continually keep a lid on it. And here we can see a fake footer, a deception. All buildings of the old world appear to have a brick core. And then there was a second era. Someone put a facade over all these brick buildings and actually did a great job. In some cases, it may have been the same builders. But in others, such as this photo, it seems to be a deception. Someone is giving the impression that this is a stone footer at ground level. And what we can see is it's absolutely not the footer, just a facade. And it's very exciting in this community because we've invented terms that didn't exist before. Now if you do a search, you'll get tons of examples of this. And here is a bigger picture of the Polytechnic Museum, which was clearly something else before it was designated as a museum. But this is just a great example of an old, and yet, according to our mainstream history, pretty new building. I mean, a building that we have a story on. A building within the last 150 years. And when we punch in old world buildings in a search today, we get great examples. And again, it was kind of speculative at one point. And now, after looking at thousands upon thousands of examples, it is not speculative. These wonders could not logistically be produced in the 1800s. Not one building, not entire cities packed with these. And as soon as heavy equipment is either reverse engineered or invented, they begin tearing these down. A great example is one of the city halls in Chicago. And we're told in the narrative they wanted to tear it down, but tearing it down would bankrupt the city, so they left it standing a while. And that brings us to a topic we call the reset. Even before old Klausi started throwing that word around, we were using it in this community to explain the evidence of this cataclysm. One of my earliest videos was on this building. They built it in a short time and tore it down in like 10 years the Gillander building. And to this day, this is the best part of any city, the old world. If you look at any travel guide, they're gonna showcase these buildings. 
this building was torn down. There is both an absolute appreciation for this architecture from the people and a disregard for it from another group of people. In many of these great fires, we are told, strange fires, were followed by great episodes of demolition. And we ask, were they ever natural fires or just great acts of demolition? Because all of these materials are beyond durable. And all of these ruins are essentially a following in the lineage or people we call the Romans. But what we find is Roman ruins everywhere. This never stopped. The capital buildings that we see in every nation, in every state and city are following a tradition, an old tradition, that we could not conceivably or logistically build in these times. We're told people used outhouses. We're told Abraham Lincoln is born in a log cabin. And there's nothing unique from what we see in Rome to what we see in the Americas. Same Corinthian columns, same domes, spires, same buried levels underneath these buildings. All brick and superior concrete blends in ruins 150 years ago. And even here, this is essentially the same age as what's sitting across from it, but this is in ruins. Same as what we see here. And all the supposed construction dates are often just the beginning of the renovation at best. And for me, the larger this subject has grown, the more it's added validity be able to share and discuss with people, get other viewpoints, and it's pretty heavy. I think what it tells us is that something could happen as little as 150 years ago, and things could start all over again. In a few generations, people would forget. I guess the heavy part is, what do you do with this? If I didn't already live off the grid in nature, I would most certainly want to do that. I don't know if it helps. It's just how I feel. The next best thing would be to try to share this information and have discussions about it with peers and people that were interested. And I don't know, maybe there's nothing to do. I think peace, inner peace, peace of mind is our greatest treasure, no matter what. And for me, this kind of brings peace. The more I understand, the better I feel. Even if I don't know all the details, I know that we come from something great, something that is better than what we have today. That we truly do stand on the shoulders of giants. Giant thinkers. A great people that existed realm wide. And we live here, all of us. It's everywhere. And perhaps that's enough to appreciate what's left, to see the art and architecture of the old world. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today. I thank you for being here. I love you all. God bless, and I'll see you next week.